Last year I told you about the exercise that all my concept art students usually hate, so this year I will be kinder and tell you about the art assignment that is my favorite one. This exercise is also one that I haven't seen in a lot of art schools. It's a shame, because it can be a really beneficial tool for creating new ideas, deepening unique characteristics of your own style and learning brushstroke rhythm. I want to explain the assignment first, so you can try this yourself and get all of these benefits into your paintings, not just in this assignment, but for the rest of your art career as well. This is intuitive painting. Painting without a plan. Just like automatic drawing, this assignment is more straightforward if you set some guidelines. I've done this method so often that these guidelines are helpful because they make me more productive and help me find those interesting ideas faster. However, it's important to outline here that the purpose of these is to help the process. If any of these 8 tips that I'm about to outline in this video cause additional friction in your process, in that case it's your responsibility as the artist to pick and choose the ones that feel natural to you. There is no wrong way of making art, and my purpose on this channel is not to gatekeep how you can be creative. This is about enabling you to find new ways to express yourself. So I hope that you can approach this art assignment with curiosity and keep an eye out on how you feel throughout the process. And I hope that you notice those moments where you stumble upon something that is exciting or fun. Because those are usually way more difficult to notice than the moments of frustration when you have a visual problem or if there's a technical issue that you can't get across. But also notice the fun and joyful moments. That's important too, because that's the direction I want you to be leaning into. 1. Just start. Don't think about what you're doing, don't think about who will see what you're doing, just begin making random brush strokes on your canvas. If you're full of great ideas you want to paint already, that's awesome. Do that instead. But on those days you want to paint but are completely flatlining regarding ideas, and I know I'm not the only one who has those days, during those moments, remember this exercise, and just like that, we have already made you way more productive than those artists who sit around waiting for divine intervention. I was one of those people as well at one point, but after I have discovered intuitive painting, this is also my default mode when I get to my work desk, and of course I'm not feeling inspired every single day. I'm here painting every day, but sometimes I just start like this, when I don't have an idea, or I'm not working on a commission where the idea is basically provided to me. Intuitive painting is about letting go of your goals and plans. The best way to notice how insanely powerful momentum can be, is to start when you don't have a clear end goal you're working towards. This might sound easy, but it's really this first part that is going to be the most difficult one. Trusting the process and investing your time into the unknown feels scary. I'm not going to lie to you and say that you'll get better at this part later. Starting will always be scary. Art is full of things that trigger our fear response. And this exercise too can do that. Even if the fears never really go away, you will grow to meet that challenge. Bravery is like a muscle that gets stronger through use. And I promise that these tips will make that dive into the unknown a little bit easier. 2. Use resolution and brush size to speed up your beginning. By this, I mean starting with as massive of a brush you can use. If the maximum brush size still feels small on your canvas, in that case you can work on your initial sketch in smaller canvas size and increase the resolution once you are deeper into the blocking process. If you want to make sure the expansion of your canvas fits your painting, you can first increase the canvas size and then manually scale up your picture using bicubic interpolation mode. Use bilinear mode if your plan consists mainly of graphic shapes with hard edges. The nearest neighbor is only for pixel art, so if you've done pixel art recently in Procreate, remember to set this back into bicubic mode, because the app remembers your last transform settings. 3. Zoom out. Like the second tip, this tip is also about pure speed. Zooming out in the beginning makes blocking in always easier and faster, so that you don't get bogged down into details, because that's not what this part is really about. 4. 
use a brush that is fun to mess around with. I don't know what exact brush that is for you, but I can tell you why I like using this honey brush for these sorts of paintings. I like the way the colors bleed and mix into each other with this tool. That makes it just really satisfying for me to add and blend colors together on canvas. To be perfectly clear here, the solution is not to use this same tool that I am using. Use whatever makes you excited to spread color around. That should be fun. Anything that makes you feel like a kid who can use as much paint as you want on any surface. If you can get there into that mindset, you know you're doing this right. When I'm having fun just enjoying the action of painting, it's easier to follow the next guideline. 5. Refrain from trying to control the painting. What you want to achieve is a feeling of assisting the painting without controlling the subject matter. Try to listen to your own thoughts when you feel like changing the painting to something else and then just say no. Instead, try to see what the painting already looks like and just improve that to be more visible. If you are still waiting to see something in the mass of brush strokes, just make more extensive changes and keep doing that until you see something. Don't scale the canvas up or zoom in before seeing the shapes that interest you, because that will only make it more difficult to get to that part where you grab onto an idea that is already there on the canvas. During this assignment, I think of myself as something other than the creative force behind the artwork. I see myself as an assistant to the painting that's happening in front of me. And I know that this might sound silly, but it really does help me paint. My part in this process is to fix the technical aspects. This allows me to let go of responsibility of making something pretty or impressive. I'm basically the janitor of this painting, and I love it. Also, give yourself enough time to discover what the painting is about. In that previous video, I was describing imagination interval training, and in that, the goal is to grab onto the first idea that comes along because of the time constraints. That whole session is a total adrenaline rush. Here, you have time to shuffle the pieces until you discover something that truly speaks to you. Whatever happens, don't let yourself get frustrated if it looks like you're not making progress. Art is not always about making progress. Sometimes it's just about discovery, and your job as an artist is to just keep going until you find something worth discovering. The crucial part here is to refrain from demanding anything of your creativity. That never works. Not just in this exercise, but in general. Demanding your creativity to show up. That doesn't work. Let it be in control. Trust me, you'll get much better results this way. So I can't demand creativity to assist me, but what I can do is I can make a lot of fancy, colorful brush strokes, and more often than not, creativity will show up at some point and tell me what I've been working on all along. 6. Play with rhythm. Make short brush strokes, make long ones, group your brush strokes into bundles around the canvas. This might seem like just one more fun way of painting in a chaotic way, but in fact, rhythm and this sort of detail grouping is one of the most advanced composition techniques that you can practice. If your painting doesn't look like anything yet, that's fantastic because it's easier to notice what kind of rhythm and brush stroke grouping is visually appealing to you especially when that's literally the only thing that you can see on the canvas. So when you see a part of the canvas that has a group of brush strokes that is visually appealing to you specifically, try to remember this in the final painting. And if you want to make this assignment more difficult, you can try to incorporate those sort of brush stroke groupings into your final artwork as well. And that can be a very practical way of making your brushstroke technique more rich and expressive in the paintings ahead. 7. All of the same methods you use in your normal paintings are still allowed. Your final painting can be a complete chaos of brushstrokes and colors, but it doesn't have to be. Preference is essential, and it will help you render elements that are not already in your visual library. You can use reference like in any other painting when you're in the process of rendering the idea in your piece, but, and this is the big but, only get to that sort of fine-tuning when it's already clear to you what the painting is about. 
up to that point, if your technical skills or visual library is bottlenecking your expression, just do a stick figure or just a random doodle in place of that idea that you will find reference for later. But don't let the technical aspect of painting stop you from discovering those ideas. And that's basically what we are doing here. We are separating the idea creation part of the painting from the technical rendering aspect of the painting. Self-critique too early in the process can stop any creative project dead in its tracks, no matter what the medium of that creative project is. Think of this very long sketching phase like a brainstorming session with yourself. First throw anything and everything at the canvas. Then start peeling away elements that you don't like. Brush strokes that are directing the eye out of the painting or colors that don't fit together. Another way to clean up your palette is to pick one dominant color in your painting and start using it over areas where the other colors are distracting. It's much easier to find a mood with one color than 30 different colors. And in case you need accent colors, those are always easy to add in later. But when you have that idea and you're rendering the final details in your painting, I cannot stress enough how important the 8 tip is here. Don't fix what's not broken. During your exploration phase, you built in all kinds of interesting textures in your painting. When you are finishing your piece, this can be an excellent opportunity to notice what kind of surfaces fit your style and what kind of areas are working against that message. Only edit out marks that fight against your own style. This is where you can make those new findings that develop your style in a very concrete, practical way. When you notice yourself thinking, oh, that looks kind of cool, I'm going to keep that in. Note those marks that you are liking, because that's how you can also develop your brush strokes to be richer and more expressive, not just in this painting, but in all of your paintings to come. Your brush strokes are like a vocabulary for the message in your painting. And this method can expand that vocabulary beyond its previous limits so that you can tell your stories in a more beautiful, engaging, interesting ways. By working like this, it's possible to shut down that self-critical side of your brain that is always trying to shoot down great ideas. For example, I love painting islands and underwater scenes. Those are some of my favorite things ever to paint. There was a moment in this process where I kept trying to figure out if this painting is an island or an underwater scene. But by following my own guidelines, I was able to let go of control and let the painting be what it already was. This is an island and an underwater scene at the same time. And noticing that moment during live stream where I was painting this, that moment where I could see what was in front of me instead of thinking I'm in charge. That was one of the most exciting moments I've had with art all year. This combination seems so simple and right for my art that I can't believe I haven't done it before. Now I have this whole new topic to explore ahead of me and I'm so proud that I didn't get in the way of that happening by overthinking it. And that's really why I wanted to make this video, because I know you all have these completely hidden aspects of your creativity that you don't even know about yet. But with a little bit of trickery, I'm sure it's possible to tease out these new concepts so that you and all the rest of us can see them. Intuitive painting doesn't have to turn into anything like this. It can remain as an abstract jungle of colors and shapes. Just remember to enjoy the process. We all take art too seriously sometimes, and deep down inside, I believe we all have that inner child who wants to just make a mess. A big, colorful, chaotic, dazzlingly beautiful mess. Also known as art. I'm Mikko, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay creative.